Hare Krishna, and welcome to the Bhagavad Gita course. Praise God Malma. We are going to today to uh, read from the chapter number four. But before that, I think it's nice if we chant a little bit Radha Madhava, just to make the atmosphere auspicious. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jamavala Bagiri Varadari Jaya Gopi Jamavala Bagiri Varadari Jashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vannachari Yamuna Tira Vannachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Radha Madhava Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we are going to read the Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 and since we have not uh, read in a long time then I was thinking I will just read through the chapter so I'm going to share the screen uh, so let's see if I manage to do that um, need to find that screen it kind of disappeared a little bit okay let's try again all right I hope everyone can see <clears throat> so chapter four is called transcendental knowledge and um, now I can't see can everybody see properly because I somehow can't see oh there it is okay yes it's visible okay yeah so text number one um, <clears throat> the personality of Godhead Loshi Krishna said I instructed the imperishable science of yoga to the sun god Vivashvan and Vivashvan instructed it to Manu the father of mankind and Manu in in his turn instructed it to Ikshvaku. Text 2. This supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is, appears to be lost. Number three, that very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can therefore understand the transcendental mystery of this science. Number four, Arjuna said, the sun god Vivashvan is senior by birth to you. How am I to understand that in the beginning you introduced this science to him. Text number five. The personality of God had said, many, many births, both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. O subduer of the enemy. Text number six. 
although I am I'm born and my transcendental body never um, deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all living entities, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Text number seven. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendant of Bharata and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Text number eight. To deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. Text number nine. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Text number 10. Being free from attachment, fear and anger, being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me. Many, many persons in the past become purified by knowledge of me. And thus they attained transcendental love for me. Text number 11. As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respect, O son of Krita. Text 12. Men in this world desire success in fruitive activities, and therefore they worship the demigods. Quickly, of course, men get results from fruitive works in this world. Text 13. According to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, the four divisions of human society are created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer, being unchangeable. Text number 14. There is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of action. One who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in the fruitive reactions of work. Text number 15. All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature. Therefore, you should perform your duty following in their footsteps. Text number 16. Even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain to you what action is, knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune. Text 17. The intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. Text number 18. One who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men. And he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. Text number 19. One is understood to be in full knowledge, whose every endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. Text 20. Abandoning all attachment to the results of his activities, ever satisfied and independent, he performs no fruitive action, although engaged in all kinds of undertakings. Text 21. Such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by sinful reactions. Text 22. He who is satisfied with gain, which comes of its own accord, who is free from duality and does not envy, who is steady in both success and failure, is never entangled, although performing actions. Text 23. The work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature and who is fully situated in transcendental knowledge merges entirely into transcendence. Text 24. A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. Text 25. 
some yogis um, perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them, and some offer sacrifices in the fire of the Supreme Brahman. Text 26. Some, the unadulterated un un brahmacharis, sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of mental control, and others, the regulated householders, sacrifice the objects of the senses in the fire of the senses. 20, uh, text 27, others who are interested in achieving self-realization through control of the mind and senses offer the functions of all the senses and of the life breath as oblations into the fire of the controlled mind. Text 28, having accepted strict vows, some become enlightened by sacrificing their possessions and others by performing severe austerities, by practicing the yoga of eightfold mysticism or by studying the Vedas to advance in transcendental knowledge. Text 20, uh, 29, still others who are inclined to the process of breath, restraint uh, to remain in trance, practice by offering the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming and the incoming breath into the outgoing and thus at last remain in trance stopping all breathing others curtailing the eating process offer the ongoing breath does it say eating, eating process offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice text 30 all these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions and having tasted the nectar of the results of sacrifices they advance toward, towards the supreme eternal atmosphere text 31 O oh, best of the kuru dynasty without sacrifice one can never have live happily on the planet or in this life what then of the next text 32 all these different types of sacrifice are approved by the Vedas, and all of them are born of different types of work. Knowing them as such, you will become liberated. Text 33. O chastiser of the enemy, the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the mere sacrifice of material possessions. After all, O son of Prita, all sacrifices of work culminate in transcendental knowledge. Text 34. Just try to learn the truth by, by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Text 35. Having obtained real knowledge from a self-realized soul, you will never fall again into such illusion. For by this knowledge, you will see that all living beings are but part of the Supreme or in other words, that they are mine. Text 36. Even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. Text 37. As a blazing fire turns firewood to ashes, O Arjuna, so does the fire of knowledge burn to ashes all reactions to material activities. Text 38. In this world, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Such knowledge is the mature fruit of all mysticism. And one who has become accomplished in the practice of devotional service enjoys this knowledge within himself in due course of time. Text 39. A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible in achieving such knowledge and having achieved, achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Text 40. But ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down for the Doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. Text 41. One who acts in devotional service, renouncing the fruits of his ac actions and whose doubts have been destroyed by transcendental knowledge, is situa situated actually in the self. 
Thus he is not bound by the reactions of work or conqueror of riches. And the last verse, text 42. Therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart, heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Armed with yoga, O Bharata, stand and fight. So that was a quick review of reading through the whole um, chapter four, which is called Transcendental Knowledge. And uh, in the, previously we went through uh, up to text 22, I think. But uh, Krishna, he starts by telling Arjuna from where he got this Transcendental Knowledge. And um, there you go. And uh, so, no, he, he explains how this knowledge came to the world. So he explained that he has talked to Bhagavad Gita before, as, as you also know, in Krishna book. When Krishna was a child, then he was, you know, they were talking about Bhagavad Gita. But, but uh, Krishna is saying that the, the knowledge was, uh, was lost and therefore he is now talking this again to, to Arjuna. Uh, so, and it, interestingly also that this has been taught to the, to the kings, or you can say the rulers or the leaders of the society. Uh, and it has been descending through the disciplic succession, as you can see in text number 34. Um, and then Arjuna is asking how is it that the sun god got this knowledge um, you sun god is much older than you but then krishna is explaining his transcendental position as the supreme personality of godhead that that um, he remembers everything he remembers every uh, you can say time he comes as an avatar he remembers every reincarnation but but Arjuna, he's just a small part of the Supreme. So, so we forget our previous life, but the Supreme Lord remembers everything. Uh, so that's here, even here, he's establishing the transcendental knowledge of the difference between the part and parcel, the small jiva or the spirit soul and the Supreme soul. Um, So, um, yeah, and then he explains also why he comes. He explains there are different reasons why he's coming, but he's also saying when, when the religious practice is declined, so then he, he's appearing in this world to reestablish the, the, the dharma, the religious principles. And, oh, there is someone who has his... Um, and microphone on. You can turn on your microphone when you want to ask a question, no problem. But otherwise, try to keep it closed. So to deliver the pious and, and annihilate the miscreants and to reestablish the principles of religion, that's why Krishna is coming again and again and again. Um, Okay, so, so this is like a little bit like a summary of what we have been going through. And uh, Krishna is also explaining that as we surrender unto him, then he will, he will reward us accordingly. And that everybody is following his path in all respects. So, so that's uh, okay. So we can go now to text number 21. So let's go in there. And then the verse is as follows. So here is the <coughs> Bhagavad Gita 421. <laughs> Translation, such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled, gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions, 
and acts only for the bare necessities of life, thus working, he is not affected by sinful reactions. And the purport by Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of ISKCON, saying, a Krishna conscious person does not expect good or bad results in his activities. His mind and intelligence are fully controlled. He knows that because he is part and parcel of the Supreme, the part played by him as a part and parcel of the whole is not his only activity, his own activity, but is only being done through him by the Supreme. <clears throat> when the hand moves, it does not move out of its own accord, but by the endeavor of the whole body. A Krishna conscious person is always dovetailed with the supreme desire, for he has no desire for personal sense gratification. He moves exactly like a part of a machine. As the machine part requires oiling and cleaning for maintenance, so a Krishna conscious man maintains himself by his work, just to remain fit for action in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. He is therefore immune to all the reactions of his endeavors. Like an animal, he has no proprietorship even over his own body. A cruel proprietor of an animal sometimes kills the animal in his possession, yet the animal does not protest, nor does it have any real independence. A Krishna conscious person, fully engaged in self-realization, has very little time to falsely possess any material objects. For maintaining body and soul, he does not require unfair means of accumulating money. He does not therefore become contaminated by such material sins. He is free from all reactions to his actions. So I read the verse again. Such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled, gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by simple reactions. Um, so Prabhupada is giving a very wonderful explanation here in this uh, in this verse that uh, I can stop sharing now. Um, so he's giving a wonderful explanation that um, when it's it's about the ego, uh, the false ego and the real ego. So the false ego is that we think we are the body, mind and so on. But the real ego, he knows I'm a, I'm a servant of God. I'm a servant of Krishna. And this body is just an instrument so he his um, his desire is one with god's desire so um, from here let's just see if he has um, is it done it's, um, okay so um, so when when we understand that we are not this body, but we are actually a servant of the Lord, so then, and when we are agreeing to give up our own selfish desires, or when we agree to give up our independent uh, plans um, for our life, and we just surrender to the plans of the Lord, because we have faith that if we do this, then everything will be great. Uh, everything will turn out great. Krishna will be pleased. Uh, so that's, you know, our only, our only desire to please Krishna. So, so then that means we are in, in line with the Lord. So that is yoga, that is called yoga or bhakti yoga through our service. So then we are, yoga means connect. So we are connected now with the Lord. And then we are flowing. We go with the flow and that flow is actually the, the spiritual energy. So like in another verse, Krishna is saying that the devotees who are surrendered, they are actually not, even if they are in material world, 
they are under the spiritual energy. They are not acting under the material energy. So when we go with that flow, then, you know, we, we kind of, we can really feel that we are, you know, somehow somebody else is has taken over our life. Somebody else is um, making the plans, making things happening. So so when we are like that, then then our life is a, is a great adventure, and uh, and and we can just see how one thing clicks with the other thing. So everything is like some perfect harmony uh, when we are cooperating with with the Lord. Although although sometimes you know, or many times in the material world, people are against devotees, and uh, there are so many obstacles in. In that sense, there are obstacles in devotees' life. You know, family members may object, or uh, bad publicity in media, or within the movement itself, there may be some controversies and so on. But but when when we are connected with Krishna and going with that spiritual flow, then Krishna is all the time also reciprocating and showing that you are on the right path, you are doing the right thing. And it doesn't mean that our life become, you know, just some lazy days or we don't need to struggle. It, that's a misunderstanding. Uh, you know, the soul is always active and there should also always be some activity, but the activity is now for, for pleasing Krishna, for pleasing Guru and Krishna. And, and therefore, uh, like Krishna is saying in the... Here in this verse, uh, we are act such a man of understanding. He is acts with his mind, with his intelligence, perfectly controlled. Because it's like one pointed. I want to please Krishna. I want to do uh, this service for Krishna. And he has given up his uh, sense of proprietorship. That is a part of the false ego. That you know, when we think I am the proprietor, this is my life. This is my body. This is instead of thinking Krishna is the proprietor, this is his body. It should be used for pleasing him. Uh, and the possessions, false ego think, this is my home, this is my wife, this is or my husband or my children, uh, my work, my bank balance and so on. But the one who has given up the, the false ego, he understands, uh, he, he, real, he has realized that everything belongs to the supreme lord and therefore this is this material energy is belongs to krishna's and it should be used in his service and that therefore krishna is saying that this person is acting only for the bare necessities of life which means you just take a little bit of the result just to maintain your body but you don't take anything more because you 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 really Deeply in your heart, you have no need. You have, you don't have these material desires that oh, I need so much, this much, that, that. No, we don't need. We don't need to go to the cinema or uh, I don't know what people do nowadays. But you know, which cost money. You just, you just do, and you are happy. You, you feel a devotee feels very happy to to just take a minimum. There is a, a great um, pleasure in in just uh, having very very small needs, and um, and the, and then Krishna is saying, if one works like that, then one is not affected by sinful reactions. So, which means there is no karma. You are not producing any karma. You are within this world, but you are not producing. You are not being bound by this world. World. So the. There is this um, analogy about the lotus flower. The lotus flower mm -hmm. lives in the water, but it's um, it's not getting wet. Okay, so enough of my talk. So I think if anybody has any questions or comments, then please you are welcome to comment something. What would you say, Tatvavada Prabhu? 
Are you still awake? You are in another time zone. So I am here. Okay. I am here. You can turn on your just, camera. I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can. But it was an interest. It was an interesting what you said that things starts to flow when they are. It's this uh, aspect of being under the spiritual energy and being then, you know, under the material energy. So, so it's the same energy, but because our attitude is certain, so therefore Krishna is reciprocating the other way. At the same time, it's easily mixed that, like you said, there are obstacles even in the devotional life that it doesn't mean that everything goes like, you know, like sunshine, reggae, you know, it still has its challenges, but it goes to the proper direction. So it's like when you are orienting, there are certain signs which shows that Krishna is showing that you are going to the proper direction, but the sign of spiritual is not that everything goes without obstacles. So that is also there. Yeah, especially in material world. If because actually, like Prabhupada said one time, we are declaring war against Maya. We are mm. declaring war against against the material world. So there will be obstacles. I mean, so many people who who try who, whoever wants to be a devotee, then everybody around them will will try to drag them down because as you said the other day they, they they are just envious because that's what they would like to do they would like to start spiritual life but at the same time they're too attached so i mean there can be so many other reasons also yeah. mm. i mean there is nothing better than spiritual life but it's always in this world on the level of consciousness where the enjoyment is there so sometimes like when we did the sangitan you know people came to us and they said are you masochists and we asked them why you are saying because it's winter it's raining people are saying no and you are just smiling but it's because it's the pleasing activity to the lord which makes so so uh, uh, that's one thing that diamonds don't become without the signing process signing is that uh, you know there's so much dirtiness which covers our consciousness that the signing process has to be a little painful mm. yeah yeah it's true it, it, if if a person doesn't uh, experience they they will never understand as the Krabba said I can describe what how milk tastes, but only when you taste it yourself, then you will understand what what it is. So, so to to please Krishna like that, to go out on the street and try to distribute the books. I mean, there is nothing more blissful than that. So that's why devotees start shining, and they are even in the middle of winter, they feel extremely blissful. So, because Krishna is pleased, but everything else is like a sign of big misery, or you should you should be feeling extremely uh, in a suffering condition. But maybe the body is, but the the soul is extremely happy. So, so that was a good example for for this verse actually for this sloka in this context. Yeah. Were you thinking about anything else in this context? No. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? Okay. So um, next. Um, let me see. All right, so next uh, Wednesday again, we will read Bhagavad Gita again, and that will be the next verse. So I'll just prepare you. It's nice if you can also study that before coming to the lecture, and then one can have some nice discussion. But I'll just read it for you. K Krishna is saying in verse 22, he who is satisfied with gain, which comes of its own accord, 
who is free from duality and does not envy, who is steady in both success and failure, is never entangled, although performing actions. So that's for the next week. And thank you very much, uh, everybody who participated. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you for the lecture. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Ki Jai. 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 Jai.